is Namrata Gulati Sapra, Deputy Editor at Saur Energy International. We are here with Mr. Sai Charan Kupili. He is the Technical Director at Jinko for South and Central Asia. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, so much. Please tell us about your recent offerings from Jinko Solar. Yeah, from Jinko Solar, it's like you very well know about Jinko Solar. Jinko Solar is a kind of leading global solar PV module manufacturer not just limiting ourselves to solar PV module kind of technologies. Being as a leader in this particular solar PV space, even we ventured into the segment of energy storage segment as a kind of solution provider, where in which you can see different products within energy storage kind of segment as a kind of solutions to utility scale, residential segment, and then c and market. We are catering with different kinds of products, you know, that, that can help in actually creating a kind of energy security in all streams, which is what is required at the end of the day. And specific to solar PV, if you just try to see, Tiger Neo is one of the product which has benchmarked the entire industry in terms of technology-wise towards turning towards Topcon. And looking at the capacity-wise, if you just try to see globally, out of 650 gigawatt capacity, close to 420 gigawatt capacity is completely getting manufactured with Topcon. And we can see that Monopark technology is slowly getting shutting down. And we easily can see that the other technologies are also trying to take shape, but it will be completely you know, leading, leaded by this particular Topcon kind of technology, which is why we could see that the standard Topcon technology is now started its, uh, you know, different phases of different optimization techniques, which is what is seen. Like standard plain, plain vanilla Topcon is now getting transformed to select to emitter Topcon. And then going forward, we easily can see that this particular same select to emitter Topcon is going to turn towards the hybrid passivation kind of technologies within Topcon. All together, in short, if you just try to see, it's going to happen with majorly the kind of power class what is expected with Topcon kind of technology with 2278 by 1134 kind of specific standard dimension. You can see 590, 595 kind of power class. Going forward, you can see the rectangular wafer modules also go, are going to come in place in solar PV part, which that is going to stand at around like 620 watt peak, where most of the developers, most of the module manufacturers also standardize this particular module dimension to 2382 by 1134. So that way we can see that the market is turning completely towards Topcon kind of technology and within this particular Topcon technology, it's completely happening with, you know, the existing power class up to 620 kind of thing with rectangular wafer and with the square wafer, you can see up to 585, 590 kind of power class. And if you had to, uh, you know, draw a comparative analysis between P-type, N-type, Monoperk, HJT and of course Topcon, uh, which one is going to take over the future and why? Absolutely. Out of this particular 650 gigawatt capacity manufacturing across the globe, you can see the majority capacity is being manufactured with Topcon, which means close to 420 to 450 gigawatt is happening with Topcon. That means a lot of R&D investment is happening on Topcon, which is the reason why you can see a lot of optimization, a lot of standardization is happening towards the entire industry is moving towards Topcon. So that way, Topcon is having better benefits. You name any kind of benefit when compared with Perk name it on the part on the fronts of power density which is more the efficiency and the energy density on all these particular factors you easily can see the kind of gain which topcon is going to lead from front is more than three percent when compared with monopore kind of technology right. and if you just try to compare with hjt hjt is again kind of one one parallel concept of n-type technology with an infinite bus bar where it requires sophisticated temperature sophisticated conditions at reducer temperature with high amount of uh, silver paste which is what is required for for manufacturing the same thing in which it is actually not going to benefit more on the fronts of cost of manufacturing which means cost of manufacturing specific to more top con kind of technology is much cheaper when compared with the expensive product of hjt kind of thing but yes down the line within short period of time you easily can see the kind of hjt uh, intervention within this particular market as a kind of second leading uh, technology provider when compared with Topcon kind of thing. But yes, now it's a time for Topcon to lead the market for the next 8 quarters to 12 quarters kind of timeline. Within 6 quarters kind of timeline, we can see the intervention of HJT also in good good way. But looking at the capacity wise, 450, 420 gigawatt capacity of Topcon versus 60 gigawatt of HJT, you very well can uh, compare the numbers when it comes to cost of manufacturing and also specific to LCOE benefit kind of thing. And for the CNI sector, you have unveiled your uh, newest offering, which is uh, Giga Sun uh, for the CNI sector. Please tell us about that. Yeah, specific to this particular market of energy security, 
on the name of ESS Energy Storage Part, where we try to provide three different products to catering the needs of residential energy storage systems, residential segment. We provide Sun Tank as a kind of solution, which is a kind of all-in-one solution. Similarly, for CNDA market, where uh, commercial and in industrial segment is completely catering on those particular aspect, where we try to provide with a kind of all-in-one solution, which generally comes with up to one megawatt hour kind of uh, solution output, wherein which even it can be, it can be even extended up to 3.44 megawatt hours for a kind of 20 feet container out of which you easily can see that this particular product whatever we are trying to provide you through sun terra or sun giga kind of solutions so this is going to have the better energy density when compared with other products so that way you easily can see levelized cost of storage with the reduced auxiliary consumption with our product which is high in class best in technology with all safety factors in place with five level five different level uh, lay, layers of levels of protection which is what is happening on the fire and safety part it all is going to add much more value in reducing your lc voice part so that way you'll have better traction towards the entire industry to move towards this particular product kind of thing with 100 h instead of going with a kind of 100 h 3.2 volts cell now it has gone to the level of 280 h to 300 h and very soon you can see even the reason is that we even have invested a lot even on the battery part as well. Right. So starting from 2024 onwards, from Q1 onwards or Q2 onwards, we will be producing our own cells itself from our own factory. So that way you can see that this particular existing 280 AH 3.2 volt cell may move towards 300 or 320 AH. Slowly and gradually we can even increase the existing energy density where in which it can operate with the temperature conditions of up to 50 degrees C with no degradation on that. Right. You mentioned your new upcoming factory where is it going to be set up and what are the capacities you are looking at producing here? So specific to ESS part, definitely we already have set up our factory in China, where in which that particular capacity is, uh, uh, that particular ESS factory, we have already supplied close to around like 300 number of different, different kinds of solutions on ESS part. And the standard solution, what we are trying to offer to the market, specific to this particular part of energy storage is like, because every system itself is a customized kind of thing. And as per, as per the kind of existing standard product, what we are going to offer, that's going to stand at around like 3.44 megawatt hour, which generally comes with 3.2 volts, 280 AH, which will stack down to 10 racks or 10, 10, 10 racks kind of thing with, within, the, within the pack configuration. So which, which, will, which will come down to 3.44 megawatt hour as a kind of standard solution. But yes, it can be customized even to the shorter version also, depending on the niche requirement of that particular specific uh, market requirements. Right. And uh, you know the lithium ion battery has been around for quite some time and of course it has been the preferred choice in the market. Uh, do you think that it's going to rule the future or, or are you think there are any upcoming uh, technologies that could replace it? Technology wise if you just try to concentrate on the advanced cell chemistries. Now definitely apart from this particular liquid electrolyte systems it's more happening with solid electrolytes and solid state uh, energy storage systems and specific to this particular solid state uh, energy storage systems where in which LFP is leading the market from front and all kinds of optimizations are expected to happen with LFP going forward also because a lot of investors and a lot of manufacturers also have invested a lot in this particular segment of LFP itself going forward definitely people are trying to look with sodium ion kind of configuration also because of the abundant uh, availability of the sodium sodium resources within the country so that itself is not going to limit uh, the entire market or the push the market to towards towards one particular technology. But yes, looking at the kind of R and D mechanism which has uh, which 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 is what is running on the fronts of this particular uh, LFP kind of technology, it is actually adding much more value on the fronts of energy density. Because for any kind of technology to to improvise itself, energy density is one of the major factor and major metric wherein which it adds much more value on the fronts of reduced uh, loss component or the round trip efficiency which is what is required from all of the existing tenders like even you name any of the tender which is coming through SECI or through NHPC or NTPC or anything all these particular tenders or even CNA market is also completely focusing on that particular part so that way you can see that improved energy density definitely will add much more value and that is going to happen more with LFP when compared with the other advanced cell chemistries right. that's what you can see right. And uh, uh, my final question, going ahead into the future, in the next two to three years, uh, what are your hopes, aspirations, capacities? Uh, let's also talk about South Asia and Central Asia. Yeah, specific to Central Asia market, definitely Uzbekistan is booming like anything. As per the last, last year, 
winter we could see that lot of demand has been raised for uzbekistan market and looking at the other markets within central asia specific to kazakhstan or kyrgyzstan or even mongolia for that particular matter and even for the uh, uh, other other regions within central asia till armenia or azerbaijan so there we easily could see that the more traction is happening towards uzbekistan market and within this particular uzbekistan market because of the support which is what is coming from the ministries whether that can be with ministry of education or ministry of environment and energy even from the ministry of construction they are more focused and they are trying to go with high power density kind of technologies with which is providing high energy density and that way we, we easily could see that our tiger neo series which is more advanced in in the fronts of power density with better efficiency is actually making much more sense and much more market share is being captured within that particular zone also and also not just limiting only to the module segment even for this particular part of energy storage also where we recently we have sub, we have we have provided our uh, you know storage solutions also for that particular market and that is even doing very well when compared to the other existing conventional products within this particular energy storage space and that way we could see that we go hand in hand specific to solar pv segment and also in energy storage part and at the end of the day you very well know that jinko solar is a kind of technology leader and we'll emr ourselves even in this particular new segment of energy storage also the same kind of technology leadership and we'll continue to continue this continue the same thing going forward thank you so much for the interaction